but I'm going to be speaking uh, into uh, divine transition. I'm going to be speaking into crossroad seasons. Uh, I'm going to be talking about intersections in life where we have to make choices and decisions and we have to know that when we're in transition seasons, when we're at an intersection, when we're at a crossroads, uh, there's going to be the right voices and there's going to be the wrong voices. Uh, there's going to be the divine and there's going to be the demonic. And so we need the wisdom of God. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. Uh, sometimes things look good and they're good, and then other times things look good and they're not good. Can anybody testify? I'm sure collectively in this room we all have so many different experiences and circumstances, and so we're just going to lean into the wisdom of the Holy Ghost today, but I do believe I'm here on assignment to announce that this church is at a crossroads, you're at a divine intersection, uh, you're in transition, and whether it's just for the house or for those present here, we're just going to trust the Lord. So would you bow your heads with me? Father, thank you for uh, today. Lord, thank you how you lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit. Lord, you led me here to Yakima and, Lord, to Redeemed City and to your people. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you'd speak to us, that you'd make your will known, that you'd bring encouragement and correction and exhortation Lord, I pray that, uh, Lord, there would be a witness in the house among your people concerning what you're saying and what you're doing in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you have in your Bibles, would you turn to Jeremiah chapter 6? I'm going to be highlighting verse 16. Jeremiah 6, 16. Jeremiah begins to prophesy over the people of Israel, and there are different translations of this verse. I'm going to read from the NLT, but it says, uh, stand at the crossroads. Some translations say, stand at the ways, W-A-Y-S, or stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the old paths. Other translations say ancient paths, or ask for wisdom. Ask where the good way is, and you will find rest for your souls. So he says, stand at a crossroads, stand at a season of transition, stand at an intersection, and ask for wisdom. Ask where uh, the good way is. Ask, Lord, do I go left? Do I go right? Have I gone down a path that maybe I recognize it's not from you? Uh, I can just testify, maybe it's just being a man, maybe it's just being a human being, but it takes real humility to confess when you're wrong. You don't need your wife to say amen, brother. You need to say amen, right? Sometimes we just, where are we going, honey? It's like, can we just stop and ask for, no, nope, I know where I'm going. And an hour later, we're just driving around and we're unwilling to ask for help and ask for directions or turn around because of our pride. We are going to touch on that today. It's, it's our pride, oftentimes our need to be right, our need to have the final say, our unwillingness to humble ourselves and confess maybe we missed it, that oftentimes hinders us from that new season that God has for us. So it says, where the good way is, walk in it, and you will find rest for your soul. There is rest and there is peace in the will of God. Hear me, the Bible says strive to enter into his rest. But once you get into his rest, there's peace. When you are in the will of God, you will feel his pleasure upon your life. And you might have to work and strive to get into his will but when you're walking in the will of God, it brings peace, it brings rest for your soul. Some of you this morning, you just need a Holy Ghost checkup. You need to check into the divine physician's office and ask yourself, how do I feel? Am I at peace with God? 
Am I enjoying his rest or does it feel chaotic? Am I full of worry and concern? All of those things could be indicator that we might need to reevaluate where we're at with him. As I look across the scriptures and I begin to take note of crossroads and intersections and transitions, what I have oftentimes found in the scriptures and specifically my own life, and this is uh, primarily one of the main points that I have for you today, is that when you find your tribe, you will find your destiny. I believe that the will of God is directly tied to human relationships. I believe that the will of God is directly tied to friendships, divine connections, divine appointments. In other words, I'll say it to you another way, right alignments produce holy assignments. Many people cannot find the will of God because they're not in the right alignment with human relationships. You've got to get around a tribe. You've got to get around a family that is a DNA match. Is there a DNA match in your circle of influence or are you just surrounded by a bunch of people who are just wandering around not really sure where they're going? And again, there's plenty of, of room to finding the will of God, but eventually you want to be in the will of God. You don't want to be in a continual crossroads. You don't want to be in continual transition. You don't want to just wake up every day wondering, should I go left and right? You want to be sure that you're walking in the will of the Lord. It's like, you know, the old dating advice. You know, hey, sister, brother, you know, don't go chasing a male or a female. You chase after the will of God. And then you look over and see who's chasing him. That makes sense? It's the same thing in finding his will. So when we're at a crossroads, when we're in transition, when we're at an intersection in life, oftentimes the choice to go left or right, frontward, or maybe we're even on the wrong path and we need to go back to where we started, a lot of times finding God's will is not in some, I know we don't want to hear this, some prophet coming to town. It's not getting on charismatic websites trying to figure out what the prophets are saying. I obviously believe in the word of God in prayer, but when you begin to find your tribe, when you begin to get in right alignments, when you position yourself around people or underneath spiritual leadership that's in the will of God, things will begin to manifest in your life that will not outside of right relationships. So if you have in your Bibles, turn to Luke 1, and let me give you an example of this. Luke chapter 1. Maybe you've never considered this before, but I think it's so clear. Luke 1 and verse 39. Now at this time Mary arose and went with haste to the hill country to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it came about that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was full of the Holy Spirit. And she cried out with a loud voice and said, Blessed among women are you, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears... The baby leapt in my womb for joy. 
There is a right alignment. There is a finding of a tribe happening with Mary and Elizabeth. And when they get together, the babies inside the womb, or for Elizabeth, John the Baptist began to leap in her womb, and she was filled with joy. This generation talks a lot about abortion, and we should. What about spiritual abortion? What about the people that are hanging around the wrong tribe and it's killing the baby you're carrying? See, everybody in this room, you have a baby inside you. There's a grace, there's a call, there's a DNA, there's something in you that God has put inside of you and we're on a journey, many of you are at a crossroads right now, and you need to begin to ask the Lord, who do I need to come into alignment with? Who do I need to come into divine friendship with so that they can begin to cause life and joy in my life rather than hanging around people who are trying to kill off what God has placed inside of me. And just stopping for a few seconds, speaking to parents and grandparents, because there's more revelation here, notice that their alignment is going to affect their sons and daughters. Notice Mary and Elizabeth's connection is going to affect the relationship between Jesus and John the Baptist. Moms and dads, grandma and grandparents, when we talk about coming into right alignments and finding the will of God, your choice and your decision to find family and DNA matches are going to directly affect your children and your children's children. Hope you feel the weight of that. This is, this is not just kind of like wandering around. Well, what happens, happens. Where I go, whatever, and I, I, you know, intention is not to offend, but, you know, when I come into this region, you feel like that vagabond thing. I sense over this whole valley and this whole region, there are just a bunch of wanderers here. Just floating around, church to church, conference to conference, a little of this and a little of that, and no one's found family. No, no one's willing to get planted somewhere. So I believe that the Lord is calling this church to consider the crossroads that you're at, the alignments that you have. Look in your inner circle. I want to say something to you. God allows tribes, but he's not into tribalism. Obviously, we have tribes in the Old Testament. We have people that have a DNA, a word from the Lord. But we're not a cult. We're not gangs. We don't have to all look like, act like, and talk like one another to be a part of the same family. Right? In family, there can be diversity. In family, there can be variety. But we have the same DNA. Just like nuclear family born from the same mom and dad, that all the children and all the grandchildren are a little bit different, but there's something that bonds them together in love. And I believe that many of you are on that journey. So we have an example of, of Elizabeth and Mary getting together. 
I want to say to you, God is encouraging many of us this morning to hang around people that make our baby jump. The Lord is also warning us, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 33, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. The Lord is providing an example of the blessing that comes when we, fi- when we find our tribe, which leads to our destiny, but he's also warning many of us about the company that we're keeping. It's very interesting when you look at some of the, the storylines, some of these intersections and these crossroads in the scriptures of God seemingly bringing people together and their lives being dramatically shifted because of that. I even think of James and John, Peter and Andrew. I mean, you're talking about disciples of Jesus who before that, before he called them, they were just doing what they always knew to do. And then suddenly one day, There was a transition that happened and Jesus came and brought them into right alignment with him. They didn't know him previously to that. I think of Ananias, a disciple. God says to him one day, hey, there's this guy named Saul. I want you to intersect his life. I'm calling you to him. And Ananias goes, "Uh, this is the guy that kills Christians. Are you sure? God is going to call you to people who might not even be who you think you're supposed to go to. God might use you to intersect someone's life, but again, not to conform to their ideology but to be sent to them as a divine messenger of reconciliation to bring them into the family of God. I think of the Ethiopian reading the scriptures in his chariot. And all of a sudden, Philip the evangelist gets sent to him and says, Hey, you know what you're reading? I'm about to open up the scriptures to you and lead you to the Lord. I even think of Cornelius in Acts 10. Here is this guy, a Roman. He's from the Italian cohort. He's just offering up incense to some kind of God and an angel appears before him and says, go send your guys over to Peter. I'm using some of these examples because Sometimes the tribe that you're called to be a part of, you don't know yet. Sometimes those people and places that are going to have the most significant impact in your life are not in your city. You might have to shift. You might have to move you might have to obey the voice of God to bring you into right alignment. Remember reading a Charisma Magazine article years ago, about 13 years ago. This man was just articulating the DNA that I have in me. And I'm stunned reading this article. I'm like, man, this guy, he's making my baby jump. So I sent an email and I said, hey, would, do you take appointments or do you have meetings? I was in Florida. He was in Denver, Colorado. He said, yeah, sure. If, if you want to come, come. Well, the problem was I didn't have any money. How was I going to get from Tampa, Florida to Denver, Colorado? Well, I trusted God and knew 
that he had a divine appointment for me, a divine connection when I was at a crossroads in my life. So a miraculous story of events, I literally get a random check from somebody for $1,400. I buy a plane ticket and a rental car, and I show up at this person's church. Little did I know that that person would become a spiritual father. But notice how he didn't come to my town. (laughs) Notice how everything was on my end to step out in faith and believe the Lord that if there was something stirring inside of me, I had to reposition myself I had to partner with the Lord to see divine alignment come. Sometimes and oftentimes, those right connections, those divine appointments, it's going to take some stretching. It's going to take some sowing of finances. It's going to take a lot of us to get where God wants us to get to. So, Lord, open up our eyes this morning. Open up our eyes in a season of crossroads, a a season of intersections, a season of transition. Lord, show us those right alignments. Show us those individuals in those places that we need to be in deeper relationship with. I mean, I, I could stand up here today and preach to you till 6 o'clock. I mean, let's, let's, talk, let's talk about Ishmael for a minute. You know, God gives Abraham a promise, right? Comes to Sarah. She's going to be pregnant. Well, he gets a little antsy. You know, as the preachers constantly preach, you know, brings the maidservant Hagar and she gets pregnant and birth in Ishmael and you know so you hear them preach ah you know if you don't wait on God you know and and get your Isaac you're gonna you know become impatient and birth your Ishmael but the part that they leave out that I find most interesting is the scriptures say God blessed Ishmael See, in our mind, we think, wait a minute. If we do something that God hasn't sanctioned, and we go ahead and do our own thing out of His timing, He won't bless it. Wrong. Okay, let me give you a revelation. God will oftentimes bless what He will not inhabit. God will oftentimes bless what He will not inhabit. So God blesses Ishmael, but with Isaac, He comes into covenant. Oh, hallelujah, folks. I don't know, I'm just here from the East Coast trying to help somebody. (laughs) Do we want to settle for God's blessing or do we want to walk in covenant with Him? Do, Do we just want to say, oh, the Lord's blessing this church, He's blessing my... Yeah, but do you have covenant with Him? What does covenant require? Ready? Cutting. When you're in covenant relationship with people, we grant them the right to cut us. (laughs) Folks, when you come into alignment, when you come into 
kingdom relationships, when you come into true spiritual fathering, they're not going to tell you what you want to hear. So I think in a, we just we, we settle for the blessing of God. God blessed Ishmael. But it deceives us and prohibits us and limits us from really pushing past his blessing and saying, Lord, I'll settle for nothing less than covenant. I don't care how much it costs me. I don't care if I need to move geographically. Lord, what are they? This is not about what they're doing and what they're not doing. This is about taking ownership and responsibility and saying, Lord, I'm going to do everything that I need to do to position myself around the right people in the right places at the right timing. John the Baptist, he's out in the wilderness. What does this scripture say? And everyone went out to see him. God is raising up voices in this nation. You're going to have to go out to see them. You're going to have to get out of credit card debt. Do you know how many people miss the will of God because they're in debt? They have no finances and no resources to position themselves for kingdom connections because we're drowning in debt. We needed a better car. We needed a better house. We needed more of this and more of that. No, thank you. I just need more of God. I'm, I'm not... Some of us that, that are older, it's like you're... You don't have time to play games. You, you just, you, you feel that in this nation. It's like, I don't, I don't want to do church anymore. I, I, I'm not looking to spend all my time hanging around people who don't want to pursue God with all their might. We have to ask ourselves this morning, are you hanging around the right tribe? Are we willing to position ourselves? Are we willing to make the sacrifices that God might be asking? Are we a people that's willing to push past, well, God's blessing this, and move deeper into covenant with Him? I wanted to just mention some of the dangers and seasons of crossroads at intersections. 1 John 2.16, and we'll begin to close, and then we'll pray. 1 John 2, I want to read from verse 16, very familiar passage of Scripture. Very popular today. Just kidding. It says... For everything, can you say everything? For everything in the world. First John 2, 16. For everything in the world. And then it lists three things. One, the lust of the flesh. Number two, the lust of the eyes. And number three, the boastful pride of life is not, can you say not, not of the Father. So when we reach crossroads, and that's why I'm here today, I'm announcing over this church, and many of us here, you're at a crossroads you're at a place of transition. Ultimately, how we get to destiny and how we navigate through is going to be found in your tribe. The right people are going to produce the right assignments. It's what we've got to hear what God is saying. But oftentimes, what's going to keep us from navigating 
crossroads transitions in a godly way is going to be these three things. Look at the scriptures. These three things. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life will lead you astray from successfully navigating transition. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life are going to lead you astray out of the will of God. The lust of the flesh. Well, we know that the scriptures talk about the works or the deeds of the flesh. Strife, jealousy, anger, witchcraft, selfish ambition, drunkenness, dissension or division, competition, rivalry. All of these things, the lust of the flesh, when we're standing at the crossroads, when we're in a season of transition, when we're at an intersection, God is saying to many of us today, beware of the lust of the flesh. Beware of the strife, the jealousy, the anger, the selfish ambition. We've got to be humble enough to say, God, not my will but yours be done. Lord, not who I might choose to align with, who makes me feel good all the time. Lord, I want a kingdom alignment. I want someone, I I need a tribe who loves me enough to tell me the truth. But again... I'm not talking about, oh, God bless this. I'm talking about covenant family. And then the lust of the eyes. It's pretty self-explanatory, probably what Abraham fell into. We know that David and Bathsheba, very clear there, right? He missed it. Read the scriptures. When it was the season or the times for the kings to go out to war, David said, how about a vacation? And it was his little vacation that led to adultery and murder. Folks, we... I don't, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't feel like in a real preachy mood this morning and trying to stir you up into some emotional experience. But many of us can look at our lives and realize, wow, it was going left and not right that cost me years. Years. It, it was the wrong friendship that cost me my children. It was the wrong marriage. It was these, what we're talking about this morning has massive consequences. That's what I love about Jesus. He did it, he wasn't trying to rush people to get saved. Jesus preached, count the cost. That's what the prophet Jeremiah is saying. Stand at the crossroads and don't get in a hurry. You need to look. What does that mean? You you need to look around. You need to get honest. You need to get vulnerable. You need to put options on the table. You need to quit playing religious games. You say, Lord, this is where I'm at. This is where this church is at. This is where my family's at. Lord, we're putting everything and we're standing and we're looking. And we're evaluating and we're saying, Lord, everything's on the table in my life. As good American Christians, most of the time, we're willing to give him everything but our finances. Lord, the house is yours, the cars are yours, the kids are yours. Lord, mold me, shape me, use me. 
Lord, I just don't want to miss you in this generation. That's my deepest heart's cry. Lord, I just want to be a part of what you're doing. I don't care if it's California or Maine. Lord, I don't care if they're black, white, Hispanic. Lord, I don't even care who you use to lead it. I just want to be around it. Really, I really feel like the Lord is, <laughs> might come across funny, but like, He's, he's crucifying the butts. It's okay to laugh. But, like, but, but, and he's, do this, and but, 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 but. Samson and Delilah. Another guy caught by the lust of the eyes. It's just amazing to me. Like, as long as we remain in the boat, there's no waves. But the moment you begin to make right choices in seasons of crossroads, all hell breaks loose. It's just like Jezebel pops out of nowhere. It's like the, the devil, he just loves to keep us tame. The moment we become courageous, the moment we become bold, the moment we're finally willing to hit the accelerator and say, yes, God. Or even sometimes the moment we're finally willing, which is the third point, to say, you know what, I missed it. Number three, it says the pride of life. Folks, for some of us to get in God's will, it's going to require humility to say, you know what, maybe the current format of what we've got going isn't anointed by Him. Or maybe what we're doing has his blessing, but we don't want to settle for God's blessing. I want covenant. Hey, I, I, don't, I don't want to be a part of three songs and a nice message. I want revival. But the cost of revival involves repentance. Not you falling down on the floor every Sunday and getting another word. It's going to require your finances to participate with the will of God. You know, oh my gosh, you know what I've learned? You got to sow where you want to go. Oh yeah. You, you, you see some place or some individual walking in what you hope to. We don't give in to the lust of the flesh and get jealous and insecure about what they're doing, we sow into that ministry or that person. We sow where we want to go. Oh, I just, I thank God for the opportunities that He's given us to invest in other ministries and people that I recognize were light years beyond where we were at but I knew if I sowed into them, God was going to bring it back. I mean, folks, it, it can get crazy. When my wife and I go to people's weddings, we don't, we don't buy them a little bowl for their tuna fish. Like we sow big into marriage because we want to reap healthy marriage. Just even feel right now the Lord wants, I'm not going to take up an offering, don't get scared. But I, I feel like the Lord wants to stir up kingdom generosity in this room. Lord, I, 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 need, I need to be a person 
that's willing to bless what you're blessing, even if I have no part in it. Feel something from the Holy Spirit on that. So the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, when we're in a season of transition and crossroads, we need to be aware of the lust of our flesh. Well, Lord, this is what you're doing with them. Forget about them. This is not about them. This is about you. Do not allow the disobedience of other people to produce disobedience in you. Don't allow what God's calling someone else to do to distract you from what He's calling you to do. And oftentimes the amazing thing is that we can be surrounded by people on the same row at church where God is telling one person to sit down and He's telling the next person to stand up. He's telling one person you're going to be in this city for the next 50 years and He's saying to other people in the city, it's time to move next year. But discerning the will of God for all of our lives is going to be up to us to get focused on Him and bring the right people around us who we trust enough to tell us the truth. It says the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. We know that the Scriptures say God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Parents, grandparents, you know what's going to impact your kids and your grandkids? Not you being right all the time. But you letting them know when you missed it. It's not you having to have the right answers all the time. It's you being willing to say, I don't know. What if we modeled dependence on God to people? Honey, I, I don't know where the provision's going to come from, but God does. Honey, I'm not really sure what's going on in this season with these people, but I know that God does. And then we allow the Holy Spirit to begin to work and reveal and have His way in us. Thank you, Lord. Will you just bow your heads with me? Preston, could you come up on the keys? Just keys is good. Thank you, Lord. I just want to sit before the Lord here for a few minutes this morning. Just posture our lives, our hearts before Him. Just want you to talk to him this morning. Want you to be honest this morning. Pharisees just pray long winded prayers. God, here we are in Yakima today. Lord, we need you. If we don't have a prayer life, what that says to you is, I don't need you. Lord, if it's getting back to the place of prayer, modeling our need for you, God, would you draw us to the secret place? Lord, for some of us, Lord, I'm asking that you would begin to connect us to the right people and disconnect us to the wrong people. 
Lord, I pray for a binding and a loosing in this room. Lord, that you would loose us from unholy alliances and that you would bind us together Lord, for some of us struggling to trust again because we've been wounded and hurt, Lord, I ask that you would heal wounds in this room today. Yeah, there's something on that. Lord, I just pray for an oil of forgiveness in this room. Lord, we choose to forgive those who have hurt us, who have lied to us, who have betrayed us. And I want to encourage you just to be real, just to be honest. Lord, here we are. Here's how I'm feeling. Give him your fears. Lord, we trust you this morning. Trust you to lead us and guide us. I hear the Lord saying, I'm shutting some things down. And I'm opening some things up. I'm closing the book. I feel like even for some of you, this is not just even about a the beginning or ending of a chapter. This is a book being closed. Years or decades. Lord, where books need to close and new books need to be opened. Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. Just hear God saying to many of us, I am a faithful shepherd. I am the great shepherd of your soul. And I'm asking you to walk with me. I'm asking you to talk to me. I'm asking you to trust me. Just keep hearing that walk with me, talk with me, trust me. Just sense an anointing to journal, an anointing to blog. There's an anointing here for poetry and creativity. And I just pray over anyone here today that's stuck. Some of you just feel stuck. Some of you are paralyzed in the spirit. The hand of Jesus is reaching out, inviting you to get up and walk. Hear the Lord saying, waiting and resting is different than lethargy and apathy. Hear that scripture, we inherit what God has promised through faith and patience. 
Lord, I pray in the waiting we wouldn't grow lazy. Lord, I pray in the seasons where you're saying to be patient that we wouldn't grow distracted. I want to pray finally over grace. Grace just to die to what people think about us. Just deeply sense that some of you, again, I don't, I sense in this room we're just not talking about a new chapter. We're talking about new books, which to me means big things are coming, big things. Big choices, big decisions. But let's just address this before the Lord. God, if you're asking us to do something, and what's keeping us from obeying is the thoughts of what will people think. Lord, we're asking for grace to die to the opinions of people and that pleasing you and following you would hold more weight with us Lord I pray for the gift of courage this morning grace to obey you Lord, I ask that you would cut off all soulish ties. Lord, sever every demonic, every demonic spirit, every familiar spirit. It's trying to pull us and fight us away from destiny. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. I pray that the message that you just received challenge you and encourage you. I do want to go into a time of prayer, but before I do that, I want to give you an opportunity to sow a one-time gift into our ministry. Uh, there's going to be a number pop up on your screen, a link in the comment section, or if you're desiring to do something further, you know, so many people around the world desire to participate with the Ultra Global Movement. We'd love to give you an opportunity to do that. That link is also going to be down in the comment sec section being a part of our partner family. Let's pray now. God, thank you for those who have watched today, who you've refreshed and challenged and encouraged. Lord, we lift up the prayer requests. We lift up the gifts, the partners that are even joining right now. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in the earth. You're readying your bride for your coming. You're bringing in a harvest of souls. And Lord, you're touching even the prayer requests being offered right now. We just ask all these things in the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Thank you so much.